Today we're going to cover communications within the design bid build delivery model. Welcome back to Chris Conkle Vlogs. Today we're back in VR. I wanted to show you the intro here. This is Tilt Brush. I'm going to move my head a lot slower this time so it doesn't look like I've been drinking when I'm in there, okay? Today's lesson is on communications in the design bid build delivery method. We have previously discussed and indicated that there are distinct hierarchical levels within each organization. Communications, whether they are verbal or written, are normally between individuals at the same level. Okay, so above this, there is an illustration that illustrates a communications matrix indicating direct or contractual lines of communication and indirect or non-binding communications. This is one possible communications matrix with other matrices being utilized when other contractual agreements are chosen. During the construction phase, special care must be taken to avoid communications that transcend the contractual lines of privity. Subcontractors should not communicate directly with the architect, but should approach the contractor's superintendent or project manager. Most problems on the job site have a larger impact than just the particular subcontractor's work and the superintendent or project manager has the responsibility and perspective to discern the full impact of the change or concern. There is often informal communication between parties. However, throughout the construction process, considerable, some considerable communication takes place between the subconsultants. There is often informal communication between parties. However, throughout the construction process, considerable communication takes place between the subconsultants and subcontractors that may be technical in nature and may be misconstrued if transferred through several parties. Uh, informal communication is important for clarifications, uh, binding communications, changes, and directions must go through the proper contractual channel, preferably, and are often required in writing. The subconsultant and subcontractor should be careful to transmit information that has impact on the contracts to the architect and contractor for official and binding communication. Okay, I am so pumped and happy to be in this uh, VR world, guys. I have some incredible, incredible stuff coming. Okay, we're still in the... We're still in the design, bid, build, delivery model. There's an owner, an architect, and a contractor. The prime contractor. I have done a drawing here that demonstrates the lines of communication. So, direct or contractual communication is in yellow. The indirect and informal lines of communication is indicated in red. Alright, so generally we communicate at the same line, right? So capital projects officer for the owner, will talk to the architect's principal in charge, who will then talk to the uh, officer in charge for the contractor. So these three levels will be communicating with one another. They will also have another level. The owner's rep, project managers for both the architect and contractor. Then we have the project architect, the project engineer, who then has no direct relationship with the superintendent. The project manager has a direct relationship with the superintendent and subcontractors. Alright, so it's important to understand that we cannot break these lines of communication during the construction phase. During bid time, during the bid time is the only time as a subcontractor can you approach the architect or owner? <clears throat> That's why a good estimator will have built a relationship <clears throat> with the owner or the architect during the bid phase. Because after award, you cannot go directly to them. You have to do it, you have to go through the proper channels. So as a subcontractor, you have to go to the superintendent <clears throat> or to the project manager in one of the weekly meetings. 
The Architects Project Manager will, will be at the meetings with the Superintendent and will stop by and check in on things and communicate with the Superintendent. <clears throat> the Owner's Inspector, same deal. We'll talk to the Superintendent when they're on site and that's how that works. So yeah, this is just a summary. You have the architects, the contractor, and the owner. I'll give you a second, copy that down. It's not something I have to go right into and explain in full. It's simple. Just follow the rules. If you have clarifications that need to be made, as a subcontractor, bring them up to the superintendent or your subcontractor, bring it up to your project manager who will then get it to the project manager for the contractor, the prime contractor, all right? Very little do we see the project architect or sub consultants on site. Definitely never really see the contract administrator on site. Um, owners, yeah, once in a while you see these guys walking around being, being led around by the superintendent or the, or one of his guys or her guys, but it's, that's communications in the design, bid, build, delivery method. We are done. We're finally done with the traditional design, bid, build, delivery method. I think it took what, six videos at least to explain it. This is the most common delivery method still used today in construction. We're going to be going into contract management next, and that's going to be a little different, but it's cool. I hope you guys liked the video, and I know my VR world is a little crazy. If I don't look drunk, I either sound it, but I'm getting better, I promise. And I wanted to tell you that I have so much coming. I have, this is uh, Autodesk VR, or VRED, Sorry, so it's a VRED. I have 3D Studio Max. I got Revit. I got every all the Autodesk, all the Autodesk software, uh, which is very expensive, but very cool. And I'm gonna be getting you uh, walking through a lot more things. Uh, we're gonna do some really. We're gonna do some augmented reality, virtual reality, all that stuff uh, with uh, VRED. Uh, I can take an AutoCAD drawing and render it so that we can walk through it in VR. And I'll be doing that as soon as I figure it all out, I'll be doing that. So uh, as I learn, I'll be teaching you the same things. And I think it's very exciting. All right, so thank you for watching Chris Uncle Vlogs. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe right down below. And don't forget, YouTube might think you like this video right there, so give it a watch. I put another playlist down there below for you. This is Chris, everybody. Bye for now. <laughs>